Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a sticky sidebar for your blog post template with Divi's video template. Here's the final result of what are going to be designed. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is to head over to our template. So I'm gonna come over here, click on Theme Builder. So we're going to do everything over here because this is what's going to allow us to have our templates applied to all the um, posts on our website. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and create a template for all our posts. Click on Create Template. Next, we need to start working on our template body. So I'm gonna click here on um, Add Custom Body and build custom body. So we're going to do this from scratch. So I'm gonna click on start building and I'm just gonna close this for now. Next, we're gonna come over here to our section settings and work on our background. So I'm gonna click here on background and um, this background here is going to have a gradient. So I'm gonna click here on the second tab, click on the plus button and now it's time to add our gradient. So I'm going to start with my first color here. So I'm gonna click and add my hexadecimal value here like that. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the video description below. Next, we're going to add our second color. So I'm going to click here and paste my second color. All right, great. So now that we have this, we are going to add our gradient direction as well. So make sure it's set to linear and then just uh, set this to 150 degrees. Next, we're going to come over here to design spacing and we are going to make sure that we don't have any space uh, between on the top and the bottom so we're going to add zero pixels to our padding and then it's time now to add our columns so i'm going to uh, save this I click on this plus button and the columns we're going to go with are these three equal columns okay so now that we have our columns we're also going to add a background color to our main row so i'm going to close this go into my row settings, click on background and add my color in here. I'm going to paste it. And again, as I mentioned, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So next I'm going to come over here to design sizing and activate use custom gutter width. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we want to make sure we set that to one. And then next, I'm going to add some left and right padding. And to do that, I'm going to come over here to spacing. Right, so let's add our padding here. We're going to set this to 3%. And then we're going to add a border to this. So for our borders, let's add some rounded corners of about 20 pixels. And make sure you have the chain activated because we want all the sides to have the 20 pixels. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to add a box shadow, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to scroll further down here, click on box shadow, and we're going to go with the first option. And what we need to do here is to set our box shadow blur strength. Okay, so this needs to be at 50. And then we need to add our shadow color. So for our shadow color, I'm just going to click here and paste my value between the brackets like that. So it is quite very subtle. So what I'm going to do next now is to head over to transform and we're going to go to transform translate and we are going to um, break this chain first of all because we need to add our value just to one of the um, sides here. So I'm going to set this to 50 pixels and now you can see here it's just uh, shifted down by 50 pixels. So now that we have this all set, this is looking great. Let us go ahead now and save. Next, we're going to come over here to our first column and this is where we're going to add our text module and I'm going to select it. Next, I'm going to add some uh, dynamic uh, content here, which is going to pull our post categories. All right, so I'm going to click on this little item here, select post categories and then I can further customize this now by going into my text settings. So I'm just going to accept this for now and then go into design, text, and let's work on our text settings. So let's start by adding our text font. So the font I'm going to use here is Alata. Here it is. Great. Next, we're going to add a color because as you can see here, we can't really read that clearly on um, this background. So let's go in and add our color. So we're going to set this to white. 
Next, we are going to set our text size and this is going to be one REM. And for our letter spacing, it's going to be one pixel. And then the line height is going to be two EM. So what we're going to do next now is set our links here to white because right now you can see here they're not really working because they are very close to my color there in the background. So I'm going to come over here and let's set this to white. And now you can see it's much easier to read. So now that we're done here, I'm going to save this and we just need to duplicate this twice and then drag to the other categories. Right, so let's go to the middle one. I'm going to click on this gear icon to go into my settings. Now, you can see here that I don't have access to my settings. So if that happens, all you have to do is to come to the bottom here, go to your layers. And then if you open this, open the rows, go to the middle one and click on this gear icon to go into your text settings. So what I'm going to do is to delete this one and uh, click on my dynamic button and then we want the post publish date okay so there we go our post publish da date is now showing i'm going to save changes next we're going to save and now we're going to go to this third column so again i'm going to click on this uh, gear icon and this time what we need here is our post comments so i'm going to delete this one click on my dynamic link and then i'm going to choose post comment count and then after here i am just going to type in comments and link to comments area is set to yes. That's fantastic. Now we can save this. Save one more time. So now we have all our content populated here by our dynamic links. Now, just to make sure my spacing is okay here, I'm just going to go back into um, to this, this one here and just make sure it's centered. So I'm going to scroll down here and center it. Okay, so now that's looking much better. Okay, great. So now that we have this all set, we need to move on and work on our second section. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, add a regular section. So I'm just going to close here for now because we need to go into the section settings. And here in the section settings, we need to add a top and bottom padding. So I'm going to click here on design spacing. So the top padding needs to be zero pixels and then the bottom needs to be 150. Now it's time to add our rows. So I'm going to save this. Click on this plus button and the row or the column structure we're going to need is this one here. So I'm going to select it. And then I need to go into my row settings. Okay, so in here we need to go to our gutter width. So I'm going to click on design, sizing, activate, use custom styles for gutter width and set this to two. Now, as I mentioned before, the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we just want it to be a bit closer on those two columns. Next, I'm going to set my width to 90 degrees. And then I'm also going to set my maximum width to uh, 2580 pixels. So you want this nice and wide. So now that I have this all set, I just need to go to spacing. So I'm going to scroll down here. In fact, let me just collapse this, go to spacing. So what we need to do here is to add 100 to the top margin and bottom margin needs to be 100 as well. So I'm going to activate my chain. Now let's go to our column settings. So for our column settings, I'm just going to go back to our contents, click on the first column, design. And here we need to go into our spacing because what we need to do is to just give this enough breathing space. So you want five pixels both to the left and the right. And let's go back to our column settings. So for our second column settings here, we're going to start off by adding our background, which is going to be white. And then I'm going to come over here to design spacing and I'm going to add 5% all around. So this just gives our design some breathing space. I know right now we can't see it because everything is all on a white background, but uh, you'll see this in a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is to come over here to our borders and we're going to apply 20 pixels all around. And then we are going to add some borders. So let's start here with the top one. So this needs to be five pixels. So I'm going to add my five pixels here and we also need another one to the side. Again, it's going to be five pixels. And then finally, we need to add our color. So I'm going to add my color in here and we also need to do the same to the top one, add our color. And I'm sure you can see it over here in our design, which is brilliant. 
Now let's add our box shadow. So I'm going to scroll further down, click on box shadow. And the one we're going to use is this one here. So I'm going to select it and we're going to go to our blur strength, set this to 50. And I also need to add my color. So the color I'm going to add here is going to have my transparency. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and just paste my color in here, just like that. So that just makes it quite subtle because we don't want that shadow to be very, very aggressive. Okay, so now that we have added all our information here, we need to add a text module to column one. So I'm going to now save this, save one more time, click on this plus button and search for my text module and select it. So what we're going to need to do is to add our dynamic text. So I'm going to click here and add my post and archive title, go into the settings. So we need a before and after here. So we want this to be a heading. So I'm going to add my heading tags, save this. Now let's go to the design heading text and make sure I'm on the heading one. And the font we need is Alata. So all our headings are going to have this uh, text. Uh, next, we are going to set our size for our text. So over here, we are going to set this to 4.8 REM. And for our letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus 2. Now let's work on our spacing. So I'm going to scroll further down here and we need to add a bit of space at the top and the bottom. So let's add a top margin of 50 pixels and we also need a bottom margin. So for our bottom margin, I'm going to set this to 100 pixels. So this just makes sure that when I enter my all my content, it's going to be all spaced out. Okay, so I'm done here. I'm going to save. Next, I'm going to add another text module to my column. So I'm going to search for it and select it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to leave this box empty. Okay, so just make sure you delete all of that. So what we're going to do here is we are going to come to the background, click on the third tab, and we are going to add a dynamic background image. So we're going to uh, set this to our featured image and make sure that our background image size here is set to cover because we want this to cover basically everything. Okay, so this is where our image is. Now let's go to our spacing. So I'm going to come over here to my design, click on spacing, and we are going to set 250 pixels both to the top and the bottom so we can really see our image here. Now let's add a border to this and this is also going to have some rounded corners at about 20 pixels. And we're also going to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here, uh, choose my style, set my blur strength to 50% or 50 pixels. And we're also going to uh, make that shadow a bit subtle by just changing the color. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and in between my brackets, I'm going to paste my color value. Okay, so now that we have this, we're also going to need to add our post content to our first column here. So I'm going to save this, click on this plus button and search for my post content. I'm going to select that. And what I need to do now is to go into my settings. So first things first, I need to make sure that my text here is all set. So I'm going to click here on design text, change this to Leto. So I'm going to search for my font. And by the way, these fonts are free to use. They're Google fonts. So go ahead and set them up on your site. Okay. So for my text size, it's going to be 1.1 REM. And we're also going to need a line height because as you can see, this is going to be quite difficult to read. So we want our line height here to be about 2.3. Okay. So that's much, much, much uh, better easier to read. So for our heading fonts, we need to change this to a latter. So I'm going to come over here, change my heading font here like that. So you need to do this to heading two, three, four, and pretty much all your headings. Okay. So just make sure you go in and set them all up. So I'm just going to go up to heading four because I don't really use heading five and six, but in your case, you can go ahead and do that. Now let's go to our spacing. So we need to um, add a bottom margin. In fact, we need to reduce the margin. Okay, so let's go to our spacing here. And for the bottom there, we're going to set it to zero pixels. Now, while we're here, we're also going to need to stylize this with CSS. So I'm going to come over here to my CSS classes and ID, and I'm going to add a CSS class. Okay, so we're going to set this to blog post content. So let's go ahead and save. Next, we're going to need to add a 
code module. So I'm going to click on this plus button and add my code module like that. And then we need to add our opening. So what we need to do here is to add our CSS code. So you need to add your opening and uh, closing brackets. And uh, this code I'm going to paste in here can be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So you can see now that this has updated our content here. In fact, all our headers now has been uh, have been updated by uh, adding a top and bottom margin. Okay, so with that all set now, what we're going to need to do is to add a sidebar. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So I'm going to come over here to column two, click on this plus button and search for my sidebar and select it. So you can see here we have this line that we have here. We don't really need that in our design. So I'm going to come over here to design layout and show border separator. We're going to say no to that. Next, we're going to come over here to our title text and change this to a letter just to have consistency throughout. And for our body text, we're going to set this to Leto. So I'm just going to come over here to body text and choose my font. There we go. So now everything is all consistent now. So I'm going to save this. Now we can also add more items here, like for example, an email opt-in, but it's of course by choice. So to add it, you can just click on this plus button and search for your email opt-in and you can add it like that and stylize it. So this is just you adding all this content over here to the left and um, you can add as many items as you want. You can even add videos and so on. So now let's save this and take a look at our final design. So remember, when you save this, this design is going to be applied to all your blog posts. So I'm going to hit save. Then I'm going to close out of here. And you can see here our template is saved. I'm going to say save changes. Now I already have a post that I uh, have on my site here. So I'm going to go to all posts. And then I'm going to go to this Hello World and click on View. Okay, so let's take a look at our final design now. So when we take a look here, you can see we have our latest category, our date, released, our comments. And when I scroll down here, you can see there it is sticky. And when I go further down, you can also see that um, it's still in position. And then I'm just going to go back up and you can see again that it's still in view. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.